Hello everyone, this is Daniel, better known as AC6000 Real Fan Productions, and today, in the first of hopefully many train discussion videos to come, I'll be discussing a personal favorite locomotive of mine. As noted by the title, I'll be discussing an engine that has become relatively forgotten among the rail fan community and has disappeared into the pages of railroading history. This engine is the Electromotive Division EMD STP45. Now, some may ask, what in the world is an EMD STP45? Well, I'll give you a bit of a rundown on the STP series of EMD engines. It first began with the introduction of the EMD STP-35 in 1964. These were ordered initially by the Seaboard Airline Railroad in the midst of a declining passenger railroad scene where the highways and the airline industry were beating the railroads in passenger travel. The Seaboard Airline approached EMD with specifications for dual-purpose freight passenger engine in the event that passenger service was discontinued on the Seaboard Airline. The SAL ordered 20 of these newfangled engines and traded their E4s and E6 cowl body diesel locomotives in exchange. The rest of the STP series of engines, excluding the STP-40F, were built similar to this fashion. A spotting difference with all the STP engines would be the extended long hood which housed the renowned steam generating system. In 1966, the EMD STP-35 was taken off the EMD catalog and replaced with the EMD STP-40. These were SD-40 locomotives incorporating passenger equipment and, their, and they retained most features of the EMD SD-40. So much so that the EMD operating manual covered both of these engines. That same year, the Southern Pacific ordered 10 EMD STP-45s from EMD. The EMD STP-45 was a 3,600 horsepower locomotive following the same concept laid by the previous two engines, a squared off long hood, steam generating system, and so on. The first of these EMD STP-45s uh, were used to replace the aging F units on the City of San Francisco Express train between Oakland and Ogden, California. They carried 2,500 gallons of fuel along with 3,000 gallons of water for use in the steam generator. The specific steam generator was used on the EMD STP-45 was the Vapor model OK4740, with a water for it being stored in an underframe tank. They featured the Pyle National Gyrolites and Nathan P3 or M5 horns. An audio example will now be shown. The price range of an STP-45 hanged around roughly $317,000, whereas for standard SD-45, it was roughly $290,000. The main reason for the cost increase was due to the steam generating system, among several other different changes to the locomotive body, such as the longer frame. Initially, the EMD SCP-45s for the Southern Pacific came with a 62 to 15 gearing ratio, setting the maximum speed for 72 miles an hour. However, this later changed to 60 to 17 to allow a maximum speed of 83 miles an hour. Several EMD SCP-45s owned by the Southern Pacific would be re-geared to 62 to 15 for use in commuter service. The SDP-45s would serve the Southern Pacific on passenger trains until Amtrak was established. However, Amtrak leased out some SDP-45s for use until EMD's, EMD's SDP-40Fs were put on Amtrak's active roster. Furthermore, they were relegated to commuter service until the introduction of Caltrain, which they were relegated to freight service afterwards, based out of Roseville, California. The entire fleet was retired by 1990 and sold for scrap. The Erie Lackawanna Railroad, also known as the Friendly Service Route, ordered modified versions of these STP-45s, calling them SD-45Ms. 
Differences between the STP45 and the ST45M was that the ST45M had a long metal head end with extra space after the radiators containing concrete ballast. They were intended for freight service only and stayed that way over its entire service career, even after going into service with Conrail and Norfolk Southern. The longer frame given to the SD45M allowed for a larger fuel tank, thus allowing them to travel a greater distance between fueling locations. The entire fleet of Erie Lackawanna SD45Ms, excluding the wrecked 3637, would go on to serve with Conrail and Norfolk Southern. Some ex Erie Lackawanna STP 45s ended up with the Southern Pacific being rebuilt by MK Rail into SE 40M 2s, the fate of which most surviving STP 45s or SE 45Ms, I mean, yeah, SE 45Ms remain in today. Some went off the service with Union Pacific, from which their operating career has been more or less forgotten. The Great Northern Railroad, leaning in on the idea of these STP 45s, purchased eight STP-45s for use on the Empire Builder to replace aging F-7 locomotives currently used on the Empire Builder. The STP-45s owned by the Great Northern served a very short passenger career, seeing remote service under Amtrak. The Great Northern Railroad merged with three other railroads to form the Midwest Rail Monopoly, known as the Burlington Northern, and under BN management, the STP-45s, along with the six STP-40s owned by the Great Northern, Return into freight locomotives. They did not live long enough under the Burlington Northern banner to see service with BNSF, and all were scrapped under Burlington Northern by the late 80s. The EMD STP 45 has been a page in railroading history that has been swept under the rug as advancements in railroading and changes in railroading management itself led to their downfall. However, this doesn't mean the EMD STP 45 failed entirely. Like the ST45X, which was based off the same engine as STP45, some were used as a test bed for future railroading technology. One STP45, Burlington Northern number 6599, was used as a test bed for an articulated four axle truck made by EMD in an attempt to increase traction. The truck was tested successfully and remained on the locomotive for the rest of its operating career until 1987 when it was scrapped. Even though dispositions for the SCP-45s may vary, one survives under ownership of a museum. This engine is Conrail 6670, former Erie Lackawanna 3639. It is owned by the Virginia Museum of Transportation. However, sadly, the locomotive has been sitting away, rusting, with many parts torn away, along with the Virginia Museum of Transportation's other forgotten equipment. It is uncertain if the locomotive will ever be cosmetically or operationally restored. However, with the right money and time allocated, there is a chance it might be restored in the near future. This concludes our first locomotive history episode from Let's Talk Trains. I hope you all enjoyed this video, and if you did, hit that like button and tell us how the video was in our comment section below. All of us from Let's Talk Trains love to read your comments. This is Daniel Chu from AC6000 Railfan Productions, and I'm wishing you a very good day. Highball.